Uh, we are going to talk about improved gut motility in infants given probiotics, but just to introduce you the first player of the game, that is the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. This tissue is the largest human lymphoid organs, and it is in a constant state of physiological inflammation. And what's the second player, better to say, the second dancer, because then we see what will be the interaction of these two players. The enteric nervous system is in the intestinal mucosa and is done by the enteric neuron, the smooth muscle cells, and the interstitial cells of Cajal. These three cellular systems are related as a net, side by side, and as you can see better here in this electronic microscopy picture, there is a strict connection also with the cells of GALT. And that's why they are in this continuous interplay. And we can go in further details and talk about with this neuroimmune interaction. What is this neuroimmune interaction? These are the nerve cells, the B cells, the macrophage, the mast cells, and the T cells. And there is an immunomodulation, in a modulation, sorry, that is bipolar. The nervous system have a role in the function of GALT, and the GALT have a role in the function of um, enteric nervous system and of intestinal motility. But the question is, what is the role of probiotic in this neuroimmune interaction? This is a stable environment and a stable intestinal microbiota. There is a correct interplay, a physiological control mechanism. All the mechanisms of, anti -inflam of inflammatory status are under control, and there is an important role of the gut-brain axis on the normal gut physiology. But what's happened when you, we manipulate intentionally the microbiome, or where something happened in the neonatal period where the colonization is starting, and then there is an altered bacterial composition. And then we have an unstable environment and an increment in physiology and inflammation. And not the least, but in a very important way, the gut-brain axis that define the abnormal gut physiology. So the altered bacterial composition, if even if we do intentionally, or if something happens or something changes in physiology, it's crucial in the development and in change the gut intestinal function. This cartoon just because we don't like the simple things. So what's the role of vessel? This net, the interstitial cells of Cajal, the, the enteric neuron, and the smart muscle cells are extremely sensitive or to anoxia, and they are absolutely related and have like connection and synapses with vessel. So the question again, what's the role of probiotic on all this? We performed two studies. The first one was on uh, newborn, and we uh, had a double-blind placebo control study, and we had the gastric emptying rate with ultrasound and electrogastrography at zero time and after 28 days of diet intervention. And we feel also a daily diary with all the gastrointestinal symptoms and tolerance. The clinical parameter we check in the daily diary were this, regurgitation, vomiting, stool frequency, weight gain, anthropometric data, and air colic. We check air colic measuring the daily crying time. These were the demographic characteristics of the newborn we check at the beginning, and you can see that the three groups were matched for uh, gestational age, birth weight, upcast score, sex, and type of delivery. And these are the results. The baby who had lactobacillus reuteri had a less episode of regurgitation compared to the one who had placebo. They had a larger number of evacuation compared to the one who had placebo, and they cry less time per day. What were the parameters we had in ultrasound? We had a reduced fasting antral area and a faster gastric emptying rate. These two parameters means a better motility of the stomach. 
So our conclusion were this, that we had a reduction of daily number of regurgitation, a reduction of daily crying time, and increased number of evacuation. We don't do it that no side effect, and they were safe and, not, and uh, were very well tolerated in preterm. The effect of motility, as you can see, were fasting gastric emptying rate, smaller fasting antral area, and the two of these are very important to define the reduction of gastric residual. That is one of the starting point to develop neck. It has been published that the baby, or the newborn who had higher gastric residual, develop easily the necrotizing enterocolitis. And we have an indirect parameter of colonic motility. The mm, paper was published in the Journal of Pediatric last year, and that was the first study that uh, showed a, a changing in a gut function mediated by probiotics. But we went further and checked the same parameter and the same technique on infants from one to four months of age who were affected of regurgitation that more than three episodes per day. We uh, gave to those baby uh, reutery for 28 days, and we had the evaluation of symptoms after the treatment. In those baby, we skip off the electrogastrography, and we perform only gastric emptying rate with ultrasound at zero time and 20 days. And we fill the daily diary with the episodes of regurgitation. These are the um, demographic characteristics characteristic before the study, and also here the baby were matched for age, sex, weight, and number of regurgitation per day. These are the results. The, the baby, the infant who took rotary had a um, less number of regurgitation per day after the treatment compared to the one who took placebo. And so was the delta gastric hemting rate. At, we can see there was an ultrasound parameter. This stomach performed better the motility. The, the stomach of the baby who took rotary improve in emptying, improve in uh, changing <coughs> from the uh, feeding state to the fasting state. So, as you say, reduction of daily number of regurgitation, even this, safety intolerant in infants, no side effect, fasting and also a faster gastric emptying rate. So concluding this, uh, um, this speech, I can just say like Teresa said before, this is a new era.